Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terradez. You're about to watch the teaching from our recent Abundant Life event. We believe that you're going to be inspired, that you're going to be encouraged, built up in your faith. So get a bottle of cute and popcorn, invite the neighbors over, sit back, relax, and receive from the Lord. Appreciate you watching. And I think they put the website on there. You can go to teradezministries.com if you need anything. And if you want any, um, any product, you can email us there. So they're coming back. This is the problem with taking breaks. It's like herding cats to get them back again. Well, I'm... This, I'm honoured, you know, this is, if you didn't know, this is Carriage Christian Centre. This is our church. We've been here for nine years. We love this church. This is our home church. And um, Pastor was uh, passing by, so I wanted him to, to, introduce, to say hello to people. And let me introduce him. Pastor Lawson, if you don't know, is a senior pastor of Carriage Christian Centre. And a great blame man. And, an extreme blessing in my life. I look at him as one of my greatest mentors. He's, he's done so much for me and Carly. Um, I haven't got time to go into it all. But I'm telling you, this man is anointed. And I'm telling you what, we're going to see awesome ministries coming out of uh, Carriage Christian Centre. We're just getting started. Amen. Amen. So greet the people, Wilson. Praise the Lord. So I'm really happy about Ashley and Carly being here and doing this event. And when they scheduled this event, I don't think they knew this was happening. But uh, Ashley just uh, is stepping down from AWM, and they're going to travel and teach and do this full time. And, you know, God's going to bless it. Uh, He called Barbara and I just the other night to ask us about it. And we knew, I've been telling this, him this for a long time. So we, we saw this for a long time, and we're really, really excited uh, about what they're doing. And I'm excited about this being one of their first events or their first event since uh, Ashley just made that decision to step down and step out in faith. And we really believe that God's going to bless their ministry and increase their ministry. And uh, I was in here for most of Carly's teaching. I was back in the back listening, but it's tremendous tremendous teaching and I'm excited, amen, about that. I'm excited about, uh, you know, good people teaching the Word of God that's going to empower people to be all that God wants them to be and do all that God wants them to do. And so Ashley, I believe, is going to be talking about favor and finances. And I want to just share one scripture uh, before I go, and it's found in Numbers chapter 6. Most of you Uh, know what this is, but it's the priestly blessing. And it says in uh, number six, verse 22 to 27, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak unto Aaron and his son saying, on this wise shall, shall, shall you bless the children of Israel saying unto them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, and they will put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. And one aspect of favor that's found in that scripture means to find favor in the face. And you know, I teach a lot on favor, and I've had this thing that I've taught for years. I have favor with God, I have favor with man, and I have a good understanding. And favor begins really with favor with God. And if you have favor in the face of God, that will bleed over and lead to favor in all your other areas of life. Praise God. And so I believe that Ashley and Carly have the favor of God, the blessing of God working in their lives, in their family, in their ministry. And I'm going to you know, agree with them. Praise God. And I believe that they're going to have supernatural blessings, supernatural increase. Amen. I know that they have favor with God and they have favor with me and God's going to give them great favor. Praise God. And so we're super excited that you're here for this first event since they just took this great step of faith. And we've actually had this at, when Ashley called me, it was on Wednesday night and we just left church and Barbara and I were together. And, um, you know what? She was right there, and Barbara hears the Lord really well, and we've actually seen this in them for a long time. So we're we're really excited about them stepping forward and doing this, and I'm glad that you're here. And I want you to bless them. Praise God. And I'll tell you, they're good ground. This is a good place to sow seed. Amen. And uh, help them go forward. We need great ministries like this to go forward. And I, be- I believe the pendulum is swinging in the church. I believe that people are moving back into the things of the word and the things of the spirit. And I believe we're going to see great growth uh, in ministries like theirs and churches like ours. I see Pastor Rick is here, churches like his. I know he's a great teacher of the word of God and res- we respect him. If you don't have a, ho- a home church, if you're visiting from out of town and you don't have a home church, we want to welcome you to 
come to Karis Christian Center tomorrow at 8.30 or 10.30. We're going to have a great time. Amen? And uh, praise God, we love you. We love Ashley and Carly, and we're excited about what they're doing. Amen? And so uh, thank you, guys. Praise God. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. What a blessing. And like Pastor said, if you haven't got a local church or if you're, if you're out of town, then you're very welcome to visit here. You're going to get some good teaching from Pastor. I actually used to do his voiceovers. I said, they say, what church do you go? I say, Pastor Lawson. They say, who's this Pastor Lawson? <laughs> I have to say, Pastor Larson. They don't understand me. But Pastor Larson's church is, uh, you can, you, you're very welcome to come. And if you're watching online, he's even got it on live stream, so you can check that out as well. Praise the Lord. But as he was saying that, you know, um, I met with Andrew yesterday, Andrew Womack, and we, in case you didn't know, we we're both graduates of Carrie's Bible College. How many of you, how many of you Carrie's Bible College graduates or students here? I mean, a lot of you. Excellent. So um, we, we, we unashamedly promote Carrie's Bible College, best Bible college in the world. And, um, and anyway, uh, we, we, uh, I met with Andrew yesterday and he said, now, how's your event going? I told him, he said, that's great. He said, now, tell them they've got to partner with you. Tell them. To, and I said, so I'll tell them that Andrew said. Okay. Because <laughs> so, I'm like, so I've got, um, we've got somewhere. I don't know where that might have in the back. But anyway, since Luke Pastor said that, I want to tell you that I am, um, I made a decision um, just a few days ago, it was uh, last week, and it was before we planned this event, to actually step down from my full-time employment in AWM. I'm not going to be employed by Andrew Warren Ministries anymore, um, and I really feel it's time. It, God, it took a lot to, for God to get me out of AWM. I'm telling you, I love that place so much. I love Caris Bible College so much. Um, I, we've been with them for 11 years. We started in 2006 as students and volunteering, and then we got employed. So we've been employed there for eight years. And for me, it was a big deal to let go of that. And what I realized was part of it was a safety net. It got, you know, part of it was honorable. I wanted to serve Andrew, and I wanted to, to serve that ministry after what had happened to us and how our lives had been changed. We wanted to serve that ministry. And I was only seeing it that I could serve him through employment. And um, after lots of words of, from God and lots of confirmation, um, I finally made the decision to step down. And uh, that was on Sunday, so I guess it's been less than a week. And uh, my last day is just in a few weeks. I've got to tidy some things up before I leave. But um, we're going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing this full time. And this is, this is what I believe the Lord's uh, shown me to do. And um, I'm, part of me is, you know, um, what's the word? Type of, not shy, that's wrong. But it's like why my whole argument was, you know, there's other ministries out there. I don't need, you know, our own ministry. Tells me I'd rather just serve another ministry. And after about two months of God just saying, no, no, it's time. I'm like, okay, Lord. I said, okay, I'll do it. But um, I want you to know this is a start for us. We've never, we haven't done any, anything like this full time before. We've worked for other ministries, other churches and things like that. But this is new. But already it's amazing. The minute I made the decision, you know, um, things started happening and opportunities started happening and, and there's things happening in the summer. We're going to be uh, in North Carolina. If anyone's watching online, we're going to be in um, Gastonia, North Carolina, and also uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, the weekend of July the 16th. We're also going to be in uh, Kansas City with Max Cornell on July the 9th, I believe that is. Yeah, July 9th, we're going to be with Max Cornell's church. Um, also, the end of um, June, I think it's like the 26th, somewhere around there. Um, the end of June and the 1st of July, we're going to be in a church in Pueblo called um, Rocky Mountain Family Church. That's Mike Davis, who's um, good friends of Pastor Lawson. Um, we're there. So things are already opening up, which is amazing. As soon as I made the decision, things started opening up. But... Um, you know, I do want to give you the opportunity, if you feel led, we've got these partnership cards, they've printed up for us. If you feel led in any way and there's an obligation, you want to look at one and pray about it, we only want people that are called to be partners of us. Okay, so if you're called, I know God's called some people to partner with this ministry because our heart is, is we want to be able to minister without charge. We don't want to go places. So if you're interested in a partnership card, we've got ushers with them, just hold your hand up. If you hold your hand up and you don't fill it out, we're not going to badger you, honestly. So just look at it and if you pray about it and think about it, our heart is we want to minister without being a burden on churches or a burden on ministries. And if they want to bless us when we're there, that's fine. But we don't want to say no to an opportunity because they haven't got the resources to bring us in. So, you know, a few months ago, I went to a boys, a children's home, a boys and girls home, and they teach this message. It's powerful. They have a church there, Water Springs Ranch. Um, Andrew supports them, a great ministry in Texicana, Texas. That's way out there, Texicana, Texas. And, you know, it was such a blessing to go there without being a burden on them at all. And, and um, you know, I wanna, we want to operate like that. We want to give this gospel away for free. And we want, we want to go to the nations, praise God. We want to go to, to the outermost parts of the world and teach people and, and help people, see people set free, see people healed, see people prosper in every area of their lives. But it does take resources. So if it's me, when I, when I met with Andrew the week before, I met with him a couple of times, when I met with him the week before, he said, you've got to do, you know, main list. You've got to write your main list. You've got to do partnership. And here was my argument. I was like, I don't want, you know... I don't want to ask from anyone. And he said to me, how do you feel if I didn't let you give to my ministry? I said, I'd be mad. 
I said, in fact, I remember one time he was preaching in this building and um, actually it was, uh, Pastor Greg Moore was teaching, but Andrew was here and Pastor Lawson was here. And I wanted to give an offering for Andrew Wright Ministries. I mean, it was, a, it was an Andrew Wright Ministries event and they weren't taking up an offering. And I lent over to Lawson. He already had his checkbook out. He said, I want to, I want to, I want to give as well. So I said, let's give. So we lent over to Andrew. You've got to take an offering. He goes, okay. So he said, Andrew said to me two weeks ago, he said, what would you, how would you feel if I said you can't give to Andrew Wright Ministries? I said, I'd be mad because I've given there consistently for 11 years. We partner with them. And same at church. We'd be mad if we, couldn't, if we couldn't give to church. So he said, you need to let people give if they want to give. So that's one thing you could do. There's partnership cards there. You can fill them out. And what we want to do is after this session, um, we're going to break for lunch. But me and Kyle would love to meet you. If you want to partner with us, if you feel like it's something you want to do, we'd love to meet you and uh, just greet you and thank you for that. So what's that? And, and pray for you. So we'll be um, probably back. We'll probably do it at the back or maybe here. We'll, wherever we are, we'll be together. Come and find us and um, we'll be here. We'll, come, we'll be, do it here. Right here. Just that's, I feel the anointing right there. We'll be there. It's not so much at the back. It's more here. That's it. If, if we'll, be, we'll be here and we'd love to just shake your hand and pray for you and meet you. Because if you feel called to partner with Terry's Ministry, this is like a ground, ground floor investment, you know, when you get in, when it's, when it's just starting out. So um, you're going to be blessed. I, I really believe, I don't know how it all works, but I believe that with good ground, when you sow into a ministry with good ground, here's what I do. I look for ministries with, in, with good ground, with big visions, who are going places, and then I partner with them because God gives seed to the sower. And what happens is, you know, our finances have been blessed, I believe, because we're givers and because we, we, we want to give to AWM, we want to give these missionaries, we want to give these ministries, we want to give this church. And what happens is God gives seed to the sower. And as Andrew Romack says, if he can get it through you, he'll get it to you, praise God. So I believe you'll, you'll be blessed if you partner with us. We'd love to meet you after this session down here if you want to partner with us. Praise the Lord. Okay. So I think that's it. Welcome the online viewers, all the Facebook people. Welcome. We're all good. We're good to go now. Okay. We're good to go now. Praise the Lord. So, so um, this is going to, I'm going to be talking about, I don't about finances, but favour in, in particular. So the, the favour of God, I love the favour of God. I love the blessings of God. I love it when things just work, praise God. And you see things, you look back and you go, look at the favour of God, look at the blessings of God. I mean, it's powerful. And I'm sure most of you get, could give testimony about how things have happened like that. And you look back and you go, that was the favour of God. But you know what? I want, I'm greedy for it. I want more of that because I want to be able to minister to more people. I want to be able to give to more people. We've done things in our finances, I'm talking on finances mainly in favour. I know favour affects lots of other areas, but I want to talk about favour in your finances, favour in your resources. And it's amazing how many things we've already been able to do, and it's just a buzz when we'll when we be able to do them. And I'm only saying this because I'm teaching on finances. I won't go around publicising this normally, but I want to tell you, we've been able to give and help a lot of people, and it's exciting when you do that. We built a house for a family in Nicaragua, uh, recently, and you know, it's $4,500, but this family are just, I mean, they're so blessed. They've got a house. They've never had a house before. We built a Bible school in, was it Burma? Burma, uh, a Bible school in Burma. It was a Rhema graduate. He had a Bible school. He needed a building. So we gave him the money to build the Bible school there. I mean, it's powerful when you can do things like that, but it takes favor. It takes favor in your finances to have that abundance to be able to give, okay? Because I don't believe God wants us to give everything so we've got nothing left, okay? Now, there's times when God may call you to give everything. He's done it to me a few times. It's tough of fun. Not so fun at the time, but the rich young ruler part is type of fun. But not everyone has to do that. He wants, the ideal thing God wants is for us to live off an abundance. And we have so much abundance, we have to give it away. You know, it's like the, it's like the story when Jesus, you know, they said, cast the nets over the, on the other side. I believe it's Luke 6, I think. Cast your nets over the other side. And they got such a big catch of fish. If they didn't call partners in, if they didn't call for their partners to help them, their boat would have sank, right? They said both boats nearly sunk. But I'm telling you, God wants us to live in such an abundance, we have to give it away. Praise God. And it, that's where I believe God wants us to, to be. So the first thing I want to talk about is, is do you believe, do you really believe you're blessed and favoured? Okay, because I tell people there's two types of Christians. I say there's those, there's those born again Christians who are blessed and favoured and they know it and believe it. And there's those born again Christians who are blessed and favoured and they don't quite fully believe it. And I want to, and I think it's something we grow in all the, all the times we be with heaven, but I want to be believing it all the time. You know what? I am blessed and favoured. No matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what's going on the outside, I am blessed by God. I have the favour of God on me, praise God. And, and this, is, this is one thing I want to tell you about being blessed in your finances or having favour in your finances. It is God's will for you. And too many people, uh, you know, religious people and people that sometimes they've got covetousness operating in their lives, sometimes they're religious, sometimes whatever it is, have got a problem with you believing that it's God's will for you to prosper. Now, I'm assuming, I'm not going to go into great detail here because I'm assuming most of us here believe it's God's will for us to prosper financially. It's God's will for us to, to be righteous through Jesus. It's God's will for us to be healed through Jesus. It's God's will for us to be prosperous through Jesus. So I, I know that most of you believe that. But I just want to tell you, it's amazing 
How many people will get mad when you speak about finance and about prospering financially? I put things out there on Facebook and put things out there and people get mad, they attack me for it. And it's like, whoa, what's, what's, where's that coming from? It's amazing. It's like the other day I, I, uh, there was a post when uh, Joel Osteen bought a $10 million mansion, okay? Now get this, right? I haven't got no $10 million mansion, Facebook. But anyway, wait, maybe one day. But Joel Osteen, this $10 million mansion, all these people got mad at him, right? Here's the thing, Joel Osteen, okay, um, didn't take any salary, hasn't taken any salary from his church, okay? So that's not coming from the believers' offerings and tithes, okay? That's all from his book sales, from his own IP, right, from his book sales. So he hasn't taken any money from the church. Not that it's wrong to take money from a church, okay, but I'm just telling you. And they got all over him, and I started to look at this, and I thought, why are they so mad? And I realised, the people that were really mad at him for his $10 million mansion, they weren't mad at Joel Osteen's $10 million mansion. They were mad, they weren't mad at his house, they were mad at their house. Because no one else with $10 million or $20 million mansions criticised him, they didn't care. So I realised the people that get mad at me sometimes with things, it's like, why are they mad at me? It's because they're struggling in that area or they're resentful or they've got covetousness operating and things like that. So it's, it's sort of interesting that this will, this will create a lot of criticism. And part of me is always on this line like, man, the more I teach it, the more criticism I get. But you know what? I can't help it because here's the bottom line. I hate poverty. I hate lack. Okay, because lack says you can't do something. The devil will get put you in a situation of lack with resources and finances. You can't go and do this. You can't go and bless this person. How many times have you been somewhere and you want to bless someone? Or you see a missionary. Man, I'd love to support that missionary. I'd love to support that ministry. Man, I see this person in line and I'd love to help them. Okay, it's amazing how many times. But if you haven't got the, the resources to do it, it will say, no, you can't do it. How many of you love to, to minister full-time? I know you're all full-time ministers, wherever, whatever you do. But I'm saying, you're like, sometimes it's right for you to give something up and minister. Sometimes it's right for you to be able to go and help that neighbour. So whether they know Jesus or not, sometimes it's right for you to go and, and buy that person's groceries. Sometimes it's right for you to take a part-time job and, and spend time with your kids, whatever it is. But resources, uh, lack of resources and lack of finances say, no, you can't do that. And I hate that. I hate poverty. Poverty sometimes will, will put you in places that you don't want to be. And I've seen too many people miss the will of God. I've seen people say, well, I'd love to go to Bible school, but I can't afford it. I've got this job in this. So I hate poverty. And it, and it goes all the way down to, people, to starvation, basically. You know, it goes all the, from every level, from, from just stopping you to ministering more, to helping people, to all the way down to starvation, to lack, where it literally causes death. So I hate poverty. And I believe Jesus dealt with poverty. Just like he dealt with sin and just like he dealt with sickness, he dealt with poverty on the cross, as we believe. So real quickly, you need to learn you need to get it deep inside of you that it's God's will for you to prosper. And it's not for your benefit. It is, but, you know, ultimately, it's for the benefit of others anyway. So if you're like me and feel guilty about prospering, you know what? It's for the, it's for the benefit of others, praise God. God's going to use you to help others, praise God. But I don't tell people, you know, in, in, in Genesis 12, he talks about, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, and make you a blessing. People say, you're just blessed to be a blessing. Okay, I had to learn this myself. I'm just blessed to be a blessing. No, God blesses us because he loves us and he wants good things for his kids. But because we're blessed, therefore we get to be a blessing. Praise God. And I've done it both ways. I've done it with nothing and I've done it with some stuff and it's a lot better to do it when you've got resources to help people. It's a lot better to do, do it when you help people and you're able to give people things. It's, it's really powerful when you do that. So we all know 2 Corinthians 5.21, right? He became sin so that we could become righteous. Okay, we know 1 Peter 2.24. He became sickness. He took stripes on his back. He became sickness on the, on the tree so that we could be healed. It's the same with our finances. It's exactly the same with our finances. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. And you can slice that however you want to slice it. That is a financial verse. In context, it's a financial verse. You can use it for other things. I don't mind using it for other things. But 2 Corinthians 8 and 2 Corinthians 9 is talking about finances and giving and stewardship and receiving. That's a financial verse. Jesus became poor so that we might become rich. And it's part of the atonement. You need to get that down on the inside of you. It's part of the atonement. Just like righteousness, it's your right to be righteous. If you receive Jesus, it's your right for healing. It's your right to be prosperous. It's part of the atonement. And it's amazing how Jesus set this up. And you know, a lot of people, this, I'm going to talk about some practical things and this afternoon about different ways of uh, making extra money and, and saving and things like that. I've got some things for you. But I want you to know, ultimately, the way to defeat lack, the way to defeat poverty is with prosperity. The way to defeat those things in your life is with prosperity. And it starts with your thinking. It starts with how you see yourself. And it starts with your believing. But really, I, I don't mind all these different things about budgeting and about saving him and saving there and doing all these things. I, I support a lot of those things. I actually believe in a lot of those things. But ultimately, you don't overcome evil with evil, managing the evil, squeezing the evil. You overcome evil with good. 
Okay, was that? Romans, uh, Romans 12, 21, if you're taking notes. Romans 12, 21. We overcome evil with good, and poverty is evil, and prosperity, prospering God's way, is good. That's a blessing. Poverty is a curse. There's no, I don't find it anywhere in the Bible where poverty is a blessing. Just like I don't find anywhere in the Bible where sickness is a blessing. So the, the deal is, you need to get to the point where you, you get this down inside of you, like, you know what? I'm believing I'm prosperous on the inside. I'm believing this, actively believing I'm prosperous. Sometimes you're going to have to go back to the scriptures and start reading those scriptures. I have a, a financial confession deal. I think you can, um, that's uh, online, I believe. But anyway, just scriptures. You can write them out yourself. Just go through every scripture about prospering. There's plenty out there. And start reading those scriptures. Start believing those scriptures. Start seeing yourself prosperous. Start seeing yourself a prosperous person and start believing that that's God's will for you. Until you do that, it doesn't matter what you do. If you see yourself poor, if you see yourself in lack, if you don't see yourself prospering, even when you get the money, the money's not going to stay around. That's why like 90% of lottery winners literally are worse off five years after they won the lottery the big, than before. Because people who play the lottery, no criticism if you play the lottery, but people who play the lottery have got a poverty mindset to start with because they believe they can give a dollar and get $10 million dollars. The people that get that, they end up back in poverty again because they were poverty-minded. So think about this. If you don't change your believing, if we don't change how we see ourselves, then the money can come and it'll go again. We can have the, I mean, lottery winners win millions and it can go again. So we need to see ourselves prosperous. We need to see, see ourselves as overcomers, praise God. And um, it's amazing the exchange life on the cross. And this, is the, this is the thing I want to emphasize when it comes to this. You've got to see it like Jesus has done the work for you. Okay, Jesus has made you prosperous. All this other practical stuff we can do is good, but if you haven't got the foundation of Jesus making you prosperous, it's not going to work because what's going to happen is you're going to go back the same, the same cycles again and, and the same issues again. So Jesus made you prosperous. You know, I love Romans 8.37. It talks about for all these things, Jesus made us more than conquerors. He made us more than conquerors. And I've always wondered, what's more than a conqueror? And some of you may have heard me say this, but I like this illustration. If you heard it again, I'll say it again. But more than a conqueror, this is the way I see it, okay? More than a conqueror. It's like a heavyweight boxer. You know, you have those, in England we have, uh, we used to have Lennox Lewis. I think, was he English or American? Lennox Lewis was English. You had Mike Tyson. Anyway, they would fight. I was a kid, I used to watch them fight. It was fascinating. 12 rounds and they used to fight and, and blood, sweat and tears and they'd fight and all the rest of it. And, the, you know, you've seen the Rocky movies, Adrian and all that. <laughs> so they'd fight. And uh, anyway, so they, I don't box because I like a challenge. But anyway, so... <laughs> So anyway, they fight each other. I'm like, oh, this is... Anyway, finally, one of them gets the other one either knocked down right, or they win, and they hold their hands out and they say, here is the heavyweight champion of the world. Okay, you've seen that? And they hold his arms up and they give him the big belt and he's all, you know, bloodied up and swollen. And they hold it up. He's the champion of the world, okay? And then they give him a purse, which is strange because he's like a big man, but they give him a purse. It's a bit girly. But they give him a purse, they give him the big belt and they hold his arms out and say, this is the champion of the world. This is the heavyweight champion of the world. Now, he's a conqueror, right? He's got his half a million dollar prize money, whatever he gets, and he's there, and he's, he is a conqueror. Okay, then his wife comes in the ring, and she walks across the, the ring, and she kisses him on the cheek, and she takes that half a million dollars, and she goes down to the Lexus dealership. Okay, she's more than a conqueror. Okay, and that's, that is what Jesus did for us. Okay, Jesus whipped the devil, he whipped poverty, whipped sickness, whipped sin at the cross. He dealt with all that. Now it's the cross. And now because of our relationship with Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Okay, we are more than conquerors. We already have it. We are already prosperous on the inside. It's amazing how many people say, well, I'm not prosperous. I mean, look at my bank account. Look at the car I drive. Look, listen, I've had plenty of opportunity, even lately, to be like, woo, is this, this, I hope this is working because my praise the Lord. Where's my Bible at? Okay, but I'm telling you, if you start looking at the circumstances, to work out how many times have you looked at thought, man, I don't feel very righteous. You know, I don't, feel, I don't feel very healed. You're dealing with something in your body. I don't feel very healed. And you know you can't go down that road. You know you say, no, I am healed. Regardless of what my body tells me, I am healed because Jesus paid the price for my healing. I am righteous because I'm righteous. Jesus paid the, 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 the cost for my righteousness. I've exchanged my sin for his righteousness. I'm righteous in my spirit in Jesus' name. You have to be the same with, with uh, prosperity. You have to be the same. If, I, if you're not, then there's always going to be a doubt in your mind. You have to get it down that Jesus paid for it. He became poverty, okay? He became poor. He had nothing when he died. When he left heaven, let me tell you, heaven's going to be a rich place. I mean, it already is, but when you get there, you're going to realize how amazing heaven is. And even when he was on earth, Jesus had money. He wasn't poor when he was on earth. The people turned up from all around trying to give him gold and frankincense and myrrh. I mean, it's like people were looking for him to give him stuff. I mean, he was not poor, okay? He had a treasurer. If you've got a treasurer, you need some money. If you've got a treasurer who steals from you, you better have some decent amount of money in there to be able to steal from you. And, you know, he traveled a lot. I mean, he wasn't poor. 
I mean, it's Easter, right? He didn't, they said, well, Jesus was poor. He didn't even have a, his own tomb. They had to, he had to borrow a grave. He didn't even have his own tomb. I said, you know, to me, that's really shrewd stewardship. That's great stewardship. Why buy a grave? You're only going to use it for three days. That's type of, I mean, seriously. Why buy a grave? And they don't do like graves, you know, is it VRBO? What would that be? GRVO, graves by owner, I mean, rental graves. They don't do rental graves. So what was his options? I mean, he's going to borrow one. So that's just good stewardship. So it's amazing how religion will twist it and make it out like Jesus was poor. God doesn't want us to be rich. It's amazing. We've been to churches that have been like, oh, it's so good, you know, you're poor. You know, it's almost like a, a spiritual thing to be poor. No, Jesus wants us to be rich, praise God. He paid the price for it. And I don't know about you, if God's paid the price for something, I'm going to make sure I receive it as best I can, praise God. That's like buying someone a big present and they don't open it. Okay, so we want to make sure we, we get this down. God wants us to prosper, praise God. And it's amazing how, you know, what we don't want to overcome uh, evil with just managing the evil. We want to come, overcome evil with good. We want to eradicate poverty with prosperity. And my prayer and hope is for everyone is that they will get this message and they will eradicate the poverty in their life with prosperity. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but you know what, that's going to happen. If you, don't, if you don't quit, praise God, like Kylie was saying, if you don't quit, if you keep believing these scriptures, do some practical things, you will see prosperity in your life and you'll be able to give more than you've ever given, praise God. But you've got to see it. If you enjoyed this teaching, visit our website today to order the complete series, teradesministries.com. So thanks for watching our Abundant Life event. We hope that you are blessed and encouraged and built up in your faith. And if you have testimonies and you'd like to contact us, we'd love to be able to hear from you. You can contact us at terrydesministries.com and shoot us an email, let us know um, what you receive from the Lord. But until next time, um, we love you and we'll see you soon. If you have been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Teradez Ministries. Visit our website, teradezministries.com, and become a partner today. Coming up next on the Abundant Life program. But for many years, as a, as a Christian, we were stuck in this rut. I said, well, you got epilepsy. It must be God's will for you, right? It must be God's will for you. you just got to learn to live with it. It's humbling you somehow. You know what? Nowhere in the New Testament does Jesus put sickness on people. In fact, everyone that comes to Jesus it is healed every single time. He's in the, he's in the healing business and he says, I'm the, yet, I'm the same yesterday, today and forever. God is not schizophrenic. Healing is not a new idea. It's all the way through the Bible, amen? But it takes some religious friends to help you mess that up. It really does. You know, in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, by his stripes, we were healed. We were healed, amen? Psalm 103 says, forget not all his benefits, who heals all your sicknesses and all your diseases. You know that little word all? It means all, right? Even, even in the original text, it means everything. Nothing is excluded from the healing power of God and God's will for you is to walk in health. So if God's will for us is to walk in health, why aren't we walking in health? Man, isn't that a point of frustration? How many of you have been believing God for healing for something in your body for a long time? Join us next time for the Abundant Life program with Ashley and Carly Terradez.